from Beatrice, Beatrice Milne. With the recent GB News resignations, will it become a new British Fox News? Well, who could answer that? <laughs> Andrew Neil. Well, I had always made it clear it wouldn't be a British Fox News. And I think you could do something different without going anywhere near Fox. Uh, Fox deals in uh, untruths, it deals in conspiracy theories, uh, and it, it deals in fake news. And that's not my kind of journalism, and I would never have set out to, to do that. Um, Is that why you've left? I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to why I'm here tonight and not with GB News uh, on that. Uh, no, hang on, Andrew, you're not going to get off that lightly. Well, I wasn't expecting why? to. No. No, so, uh, this is your first uh, appearance on anything other than GB News since you announced your resignation. Why have you quit? Uh, in the run-up to the launch, through the launch, and in the aftermath of the launch, and I think most of you who know anything about it will know that you couldn't file the, the launch under startling success, uh, more and more differences emerged between myself and the other senior managers and the board of GB News. And rather than these differences narrowing, they got wider and wider. And I felt it was best that if that's the route they wanted to take, then that's up to them. That's, and what it's was their that? money. What was that route? And, uh, well, the route is what I think is what you can see on GV News at, at the moment. People should make up their own minds as to whether that's what they want to watch. I thought it wasn't for me. And I, it, I had wanted a different route. Doesn't mean I'm right there wrong, but it certainly was a difference. And is it I, because you felt they were going too far to the right? I, I also spent the summer looking at all no, the No, I'm work asking, I have is it that you felt they were going too far to the right? People should make up their own minds on that. No, but we're just oh, wondering I'm, why you. What, what I've told you is that the differences were such that the direction they were going in was not the di direction that I had outlined. It was not the direction that I had envisaged for the channel. Uh, and, but I was in a minority of one. So it's doing what it's doing, and it's up to them. Good luck to them if that's what they want to do. But it wasn't going to be with me. You know, lockdown and the summer and all the rest of it made us rethink uh, our priorities as well. And I decided, too, it was time I had to cut down on some of my commitments and uh, perhaps maybe enjoy myself a little bit more. Now, even get to appear on question time every now and then, which I haven't done for two decades. Uh, and that given that these differences have emerged, these disagreements, of the direction of the channel and the way it was going, and many other things too, I don't want to bore you with. It seemed to me that one of the commitments I should give up is GB News. And that's what I've done. I'm very comfortable with it. Indeed, I feel at peace with myself. As a result, I, people know my kind of journalism, and that's where I'm going to stick to. Well, we're very pleased to have you here tonight, Andrew. I'm glad you didn't um, decide, out of all the things you're giving up, you give us up as well. Nels. <laughs> so I know there's a cabinet reshuffle going on. And I've had to do my own too. So I came with something from my own cabinet or so. And it's just... Um, what does that say? We you can't might see remember it here on it. the panel. You Andrew might, might remember these days or so. So it says, um, why Britain's new TV news channel won't be woke. So, and I thought to myself, I'd just bring that along. And um, for the benefit of those at home, also, I bought a bigger copy too. So there we go. So as you can, <laughs> so as you go can on, you see, might have to, because so. not everyone is familiar with GB News, news. So you might have to explain I, why I you came brought from that. The, so GB News. Oh, sorry, with GB. Um, everybody's not familiar with GB News. It's the well. Okay. So <laughs> the I'll viewing explain. figures would suggest that not everyone is. Familiar. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> you're right. Absolutely, they are zero. They're kind of close to zero uh, viewers on an ongoing basis, uh, for a long time now. GB News was set up as it says over here in black and white, and a channel that was intended to not be quote unquote woke, that it was going to be a channel that was going to fight the quote unquote culture wars. I posited to you, Andrew, that you actually knew exactly what you guys were setting up. That you were setting up, when you used the term like woke as a pejorative, I put it to you that you knew exactly who the, that dog whistle, you exactly knew the dog you were blowing, the, you were blowing that whistle at. So why am I not still there? You, that's up to Well, why were you there to begin with if, when you were doing you, that? If you're saying that what's happened is what I wanted, why would I, not, why would I be here tonight and not still Because I think, well, I'll, I'll give you my I mean, reason, you don't right? know me. No, no, uh, no, I'll give you my reason. And, and, I'll, give you, you, you I'll are, give you my perception. You're assuming things of which you have no knowledge well, whatsoever. Well, I'll give you my perception of how I view things or so. I think GB oh, you're News... Oh, so I'll give you... My, I, I think GB News, when it launched up, was actually a very, very shoddy um, platform or so. It came out, it was embarrassing to watch, um, to... Um, to Beatrice, it's not going to be Fox News. It's not Fox News by any means. 
Fox News actually has very, very decent production values or so, and very well thought through programming. GB News is by no means whatsoever Fox News. It's actually a very inferior product to almost anything on the market. But what we actually had, what GB News did represent is the exact same thing that Fox News represented, which was for the purpose of re-mainstreaming and maintaining a, almost a cocktail of bigotries within our nation under the quote-unquote term woke. And I'm, it's good to see that Andrew's left it, but it's sad to see that Andrew's actually has thrown his considerable pearl to this swine of an outfit that he should, and I, I, it, it really breaks my heart when we see one of our most prominent and popular and powerful journalists in the society really broken down and traduced by his own means. I'm I disappointed to put it that way. So I'm, I'm broken down and introduced. No, yeah, I think you're broken down and introduced in terms of, as, a sta as you're standing as a journalist in this society, most definitely. Andrew Neil, you're not who you were about, tw about, about 24 months ago. For someone who's never met me, you seem to know a hell of a lot about Andrew, me. Andrew, I know how the audience you know? perceives you or so. That is my journalist. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Of course, you know how the audience perceives you. There's a reason why you left your show after eight, after eight, after eight episodes. I left for the reasons I've given. And, and, and the reason you've given, I don't I'm regret it the at all. Thing. And... Uh, you know, being abused by you is a abused. privilege in its own way. Uh, right. And when you do your homework, maybe you'll come back and apologise and we can have a sensible conversation. OK, I'm just going to stop you there for a minute, A, because I have to get other people in the panel. Also, it may be that there will be people in GB News who might object to how it's being described. They're not here to speak for themselves. So I'll just say that. James, the question is, with the recent GB News resignations, I mean, Andrew has left, but also there have been other resignations of senior editorial staff, uh, other presenters. Will it become a British Fox News? Is that something you'd like to see? Well, look, I don't know what it's going to become. I've stopped watching it after Andrew stopped his show, frankly. Um, and, and, I, and I thought there was real promise. Not one minister in Whitehall, nor I suspect any shadow minister, would have wanted to have swapped places with Rishi on the extended interview you did with him. But there was something about that where it was, was I don't know, it was a half an hour, 45 minutes or an hour, but, you know, there were very, very, very challenging, exacting questions, long answers given that were with detail, and I thought that there's a market for that. A lot of us increasingly get our news from algorithmically reinforced echo chambers on social media. I wouldn't advise anybody to watch one news channel, but I think that there was a market for a channel that was going to take a different editorial line so that by switching between channels, you could break out of that algorithmically reinforced echo chamber and hear some different opinions. James, I, I James, don't know where hey, let, let GB know. News goes. I, I'm not sure I massively care, but I think that what the problem is that in the absence of it succeeding in its mission, as Andrew stated when he launched it, there remains a market for somebody to speak about those issues in a way that is a bit less metropolitan. And I don't like the idea that it's woke or not woke. I just think there needs to be a plurality of opinion because I think that brings with it a greater tolerance well, and understanding. You I certainly think get, that's a good thing. You certainly oh, get, hang on, Nels, I'm just going to get around the panel. You certainly get plurality of opinion uh, on question time, not only from the audience, but also from our panel. So, Kate, what's your view? I don't know if it's even going to survive. If it does, I don't know in what form it will survive and what sort of editorial line we might be seeing it taking in six or 12 or 18 months' time. What I do know is that, in my view, we don't need a channel that spreads dissent and hatred, that creates division within our communities. We don't need a channel that insults and ridicules. And we do need a channel that is accurate, truthful, and broadcasts the facts. If GB News can get round those hurdles, then I hope it survives, because I too like to hear a plurality of voices and broadcasters in our media. But no. too often we seem to defend hatred, abuse and division in the name of, and again, it's, it's a trite cliche that's used too lazily. We, t we call it free speech. Well, I say, what about good manners? What about kindness and courtesy to one another? Mm. And a channel that doesn't offer that, I do <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I didn't watch it enough, and I was interviewed it on a, on a couple of times, and there were so many hiccups in the way that it started that it, it kind of wasn't... I don't think it fulfilled its potential to start with, and I think those were the challenges. Whether it would be another Fox News, I, I, I don't know. I doubt it, but 
you know, these are things that are evolving. But in order for it to be a credible channel, it needs to have the voices, different voices to the ones we normally have. And if they can, if they can sort that out, then actually it might go on to survive. But the way that it is, and the, the one interview I saw on it, uh, on it with about social care was absolutely dreadful because you know, the way it was presented was terrible. So I think it's got a long way to grow. Uh, and if it's going to survive, let's hope it survives with a slightly different uh, methodology used to bring back good news um, and not cause divisions, as you've said, because I think division isn't something we need in this world that we're living in now. OK, let's take another question from Fiaz Khan.